Today, I'm going to present a project about how spatial boundaries might help us make fewer episodic memory errors that are related to associative inference. In our daily life, not all the knowledge could come from direct, direct observations. In many situations, we have to make inference. For example, in the ABBC paradigm, you might see a man running a dog in one episode, and in another episode, you might see a woman running the same dog. Because of this same dog, you could infer that the man and the woman could be associated together. However, in the more naturalistic settings, you could see many other details in the same episodes. Merging together A, B, and B, C associations could make people feel confused about where they actually see these details. Like I might be confused about where I actually see the blue butterfly. One of the mechanisms that could help us make fewer such errors is event segmentations. Although perceptual information is continuous, we actually perceive our daily life as a succession of different events that are segregated by event boundaries. A door and a war is one of the commonest event boundaries. A lot of previous study have showed that our memories could be organized by these event boundaries. Elements coming from the same events are more likely to be bonded together than the elements coming from different events. In the latest study, Michael Mann, Hazen, and Norman uh, further argued that uh, the event boundary could guide the memory retrieval process. They found that individuals would uh, skip to the beginning of a new event if they realized that the to be retrieved item when is very unlikely to be in the current event. In our study, we tried to test a hypothesis that segregating could also help us make fewer memory misattribution after associative inference. In our study, we asked all the participants to study the A, B images at one side of the room, and then they have to walk to the other side of the room to study the B, C images. We manipulated the boundary condition by using a portable, portable screen um, in the middle of the room so that participants assigned to the boundary condition have to walk through a door in the middle of the room between their A, B, and B, C images encoding. In the memory test that happened two days later, we manipulated uh, the testing order of, of the memory. We test both the association and the detail memory. By manipulating this testing order, we want to see the effect of associative uh, inference on the detail memory. So in our association test, we test both the associative inference, that is, uh, which person is, uh, is associated with this Q person because of a common object. And we also test, tested uh, the direct association between a human being and an object. Like in this case, this man is paired with this motorcycle. In the detailed memory test, we will use this man as a cue, and then we will ask five different questions about the details in the same AV image. For example, we might ask, uh, what did this person send on? In the answers, we provide an answer that is correct, that is con uh, concrete floor, and a false memory answer that is an answer coming from the corresponding BC image, and a made up answer that is a FOIL answer, and also we could uh, allow participants to say, we, I, didn't I didn't remember. And we also ask participants, where did they see this detail? So what did we find? We find that generally people in the non-boundary group will be more likely to uh, make memory misattributions. And we also break down the results by the, uh, uh, the uh, misattribution results by the associative uh, inference test order and their results. As expected, people in the non-boundary group, after they successfully make uh, this associative inference, they will be more likely to misattribute the detail to their own sources. But that didn't happen in the boundary condition. Well, in the boundary condition, even after people successfully pairing the um, two associations together, there will be the, the proportion of memory misattribution will not increase. The second question we are concerned about is the structure of this memory, of this uh, remembering and switching. For each picture, we will ask five details. We are curious about whether these five details are remembered or switched in a holistic or fragmented way. 
if they are in a holistic way that to say all these details will be remembered or switched altogether. But if they are remembered in a fragmented way that to say, I remember this tree, that cannot say anything about whether I could remember or switch the butterfly. Our hypothesis is that if we calculate the rem remembering and switching rate for each picture, and if the participants actually remember the, all the details in a holistic way, that is to say, well, one of the zero of the five or one of the five of the picture will be a remember, remember switch, or that it will be four uh, out of five or five all details will be remember switch. So more closer to all or now situation. In order to test our hypothesis, we actually compare the distribution of the real data and the simulated data. Uh, we, in order to get a simulated data, we shift the image label. For the real data, all this question coming from the same picture. But after we do the shuffling, this detail uh, question no longer coming from the same, same picture. Uh, for each participant, we shuffling 1,000 times and then average them. Then we compare the uh, response distribution by, the comp uh, by their boundary condition. However, in terms of this uh, remembering, we cannot see any difference between the real data and the simulated data. Um, and that is the same with the misattribution data. So our conclusion could be even a segmentation de decreases the likelihood that people will misattribute the details to the corresponding uh, episodes. And the spatial boundary even could, per could pr protect this episodic detail information even after people um, successfully pairing these overlapping associations together. However, our structure uh, analysis uh, cannot support the holistic remembering way. Actually, for this part, we think we got this preliminary data and we'd love to hear from all the listeners, our audience, any other good uh, idea about how to do this analysis to refine our analysis. Thank you for the listening. <laughs>